Welcome back, everybody. As many of you probably know, there's some discussion going on right now about stabilizing braces. So as of when I'm recording this, this is the 25th of November, and a story broke across social media yesterday about uh, some ATF findings and uh, different documents that came out apparently via FOIA requests. However, I have some doubts about that. Uh, not that it didn't happen, but why it happened, rather. Um, so basically, there's two letters that came out um, concerning SB Tactical, their braces, etc. Um, and I would imagine that would apply to all braces, but in this, in these examples, rather, it's very specific um, to SB Tactical. So the first one is going to be from July 18th, 2018. You guys are going to see screenshots here the entire time uh, as I'm talking, just to kind of show you what is going on. But basically, that letter states that only two of the SB Tactical braces that are out there on the market have been officially approved by ATF and FAT-D, um, which is their determining body over there at the ATF, and that would be the SB-15 and the MPX-PSB, and then it lists uh, ones that are not approved. Again, that letter, though, is dated 2018, so whether or not that's changed between then, we don't know, uh, because unfortunately, a lot of these letters just simply never come out. Um, but this one did as of yesterday, so you guys can read all of that there. And then sort of kind of the bigger one that came out is, was rather from September of 2020, so very recently. So let me just walk everyone back here, um, sort of a timeline analysis. So back in June, Congressman Gates, as well as several other members of Congress, put out a letter, a public letter to the ATF, basically telling them to stop doing um, interpretations of what is a firearm, what isn't a firearm, specifically as it pertained to um, SP Tactical. Now, if you follow the timeline, right, September, this opinion was published that I'm about to get into. Then right after that is when the Honey Badger news came out where they said the Honey Badger was a short barrel rifle rather than a pistol. Um, of course, they've walked that back since and now have a, you know, it's kind of pending at this point. Um, but if you look at just the timeline of everything, it kind of, uh, it's a little suspicious in my opinion. So the second document, again, September 2020, came out. And what this is, is it's a, um, a criminal branch report of technical examination. So the reason this document exists is because someone was charged with a crime. And then additionally, they had a shotgun with an SBA3 on it. And basically the prosecutor is asking the ATF to tell him or her if this is in fact an NFA item. So that way they can slap an additional charge on there of, uh, you know, obviously possessing a short barrel shotgun. So um, it goes through it, talks about a lot of things up front. Um, but I'm going to scroll down to the important parts here. Um, they discuss what a stabilizing brace is. And just below that, they actually get into some opinions, which this is the interesting part about this letter. So they say the same manufacturer will then advertise their products as devices that permit customers to fire their pistols from the shoulder, that is, making a short barrel rifle without complying with the requirements of the NFA. This is far from incidental. They continue on. In conclusion, ATF does not regulate the manufacturer's sale or possession of firearms accessories such as stocks, secondary grips, or stabilizing braces. While these items are unregulated on their own, attachment of these uh, items could change the classification of a firearm to which they are attached. So they're saying they don't regulate it, but then right after that in the next sentence, they say they do regulate it. Then after all of that, they get into Exhibit 13, which is the actual item that they're looking at, which is a 12-gauge firearm, which has a SBA3 pistol stabilizing brace attached to it. Um, and then right in the first paragraph, they say, which has been previously and repetitively determined to be a shouldering device, not a stabilizing device. device discussed below. Continuing on through the letter, before getting into the actual findings themselves, they actually start giving opinions and background information on SB Tactical. So they go in there and say, since the data notification, SB Tactical has continued to market these accessories as ATF compliant. Um, although ATF has made a consistent effort to inform SB Tactical, they are perpetuating a false narrative regarding the accessories they market. SB Tactical has taken the position that ATF has no authority to regulate an accessory manufacturer, which they 
themselves just stated earlier in this um, letter, so let that sink in. Uh, this has essentially left SB Tactical's business partners, such as it's deleted out, in the position where they are unwillingly manufacturing and marketing NFA items, unregistered NFA items. They say in February 2019, SB Tactical was made aware through outside sources that ATF determined in a criminal examination that the SB A3 accessory is a shouldering device and not a stabilizing device. Although SB Tactical is aware of this determination, it has continued to attempt to flood the market with the SB A3 accessory misleading its business partners that the attachment of the accessory will not change the classification of a firearm. They continue on and then finally get to the actual finding, which is what this entire thing was supposed to be about. Um, basically, they find that in this configuration, this particular 12 gauge firearm with the SB A3 attached is in fact a short barreled shotgun. Now, that's all that this letter should have said. I've talked to two attorneys this morning and both of them said that they've seen these documents many, many times and never is their opinion or history in there. All they do is just say yes or no, it is or is not an NFA item or a shotgun or whatever the case may be. However, um, that's why I find the timing of this very sus suspicious rather. My opinion is, this is obviously just my opinion, the ATF wrote this letter in a way so that way they could leak it later on and make it look bad for the entire community, if that makes sense, community of folks who own SB tactical braces or any other braces for that matter, um, because there's really no other reason why. Again, two documents have come out, this one, and then the 2018 one that we already talked about, and basically both of them are shining a not so good light, I suppose you could say, on pistol braces, but within them, they've only determined that one individual firearm actually violates the NFA. So. A lot of you are probably asking, does my SBA-3 that I have on my AR pistol or SBA-4, does that now make it an, a short barrel rifle? The answer to that, as of right now, in my opinion, is no. Um, but in the future, it definitely leaves a lot of gray room, gray area rather, for the ATF to come in and say that it is. So with the black and white portion of this out of the way, just something to think about here that I thought about anyway is that the ATF has some kind of holes in its argument, in my opinion, so they are a law enforcement agency at the end of the day, right? As well as a regulatory agency. So they say that SBA ta SB Tactical has produced, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of th these items over the years, and they're enabling people and manufacturers to create unregistered short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, et cetera. So if that's the case, and they've been no, and the ATF has known about it, why has no one been arrested? Why have no manufacturers outside of Q at this point that we know of been told that they can't continue to manufacture it? <sighs> There's a number of answers that there could be for that. Number one is that perhaps the ATF realizes they don't have legal standing for that. They don't have the ability to do it because as they said, they, they don't have the authority to regulate uh, components. Or the counter argument of that is, you know, if you just think about it, maybe they're setting it up so that way there are you know, a million, two million, whatever the case may be of these devices out there in the market and then all of a sudden they can flip a switch and overnight make everyone felons. The ATF has done that before with other items, right? This isn't unheard of. Um, also, they've done it with other items but grandfathered in previously made stuff. So what direction this will go, I have no idea. However, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, my opinion, I'm not going to take off my SBA 3s or SBA 4s. I'm going to continue to use them. Um, but it definitely, the way this came out, in my opinion, is very likely, was very likely planned by the ATF and basically is a campaign against SB Tactical using social media um, to get the word out and spread panic and fear. So I suppose that's basically all I want to say on that. Obviously, things will come out over the next few days uh, with more detail on this. But that's what we know right now. That's my initial thoughts on it. Uh, I definitely could be wrong. We shall see. If you guys have any questions about what we talked about, anything like that, you can uh, post down below in the comment section. However, if you actually need your question answered, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page. I will probably put these documents up there over at Facebook as well, so that way you guys can reference them. Obviously, I can't put them uh, below in YouTube. It just doesn't work like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.